You're such an asshole. Once was a man named Clary. He went to school and hated it a lot. And then he went and worked in baking. And he wanted to grab his boss and put a shot in his head. He'd be dead. Oh, Clary, the man of the West. That was my horrible ballad. Hey, Aaron, I'm a 20-year-old 20, 20 in New York City. What's with New York City today? As a college student, don't want to say where, majoring in computer information systems and bachelors of science. Since I was a teenager, I became socially awkward and had trouble making friends in high school, even though awkwardly I was a nice guy who would help people with work. I know, stupid, simp-ass mistake. You got it. You got it. People always used to use me like a hooker in Nevada, because you let them. I don't really know how to talk to people. I suddenly look stupid trying to get people's attention because of the negative aspects of my high school career. I really can't make friends at all because I don't push myself at all. I feel sad and lonely because I feel like I'm going to be without friends all my life and that whenever I see friends congregate like in Chipotle, I always feel like crying because I feel like a punk ass loser. Uh, I, must, I hate myself because unlike my extended family members in college, they're all having a blast and that really other than being able to drink on my 21st birthday next year, there's nothing to be excited about in life. <clears throat> in short, I feel sad because I don't like being without friends and the friends in high school no longer contact me because I'm a Trump supporter who is Bangladeshi and I know typical ass white liberals. Okay, that's the one first real problem you've mentioned in all your bitching and whining and crying and moping and complaining. Frankly, I want to beat the shit out of you because you need that. And frankly, you need to get inspiring, you need to boost your testosterone, so I think jujitsu or kickboxing or something. But my God, do I want to beat the shit out of you. I can't, I'm not going, I mean, this is not a threat. But you're, you're like weak. You're this, it's tribalism, survival of the tribe, survival of the fittest. Like, holy shit, this guy is a fucking sap, and I don't want him eating the, the tribe's resources. I don't want him coming along on the hunt or when we go to war with the other tribe to because he is just going to get us in trouble. Like, let's get the mammoth to stampede him. All right? That's why people don't want to hang out with you because you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. well, fucking hell, I want to hang out with that happy fella. This is the real, this is a, really the only legitimate thing that's outside of your control that you mentioned. <clears throat> I'm going to address it, but we'll get to the other stuff later. Uh, yeah, you can't, that, that's, it's unfortunate. But yeah, leftists and people your age, 20-somethings, especially in New York City, you're, they're morons. Everyone in your cohort, your generation, are morons. And they are so brainwashed that I would not even introduce politics into, you don't mention politics. I would even lie at your age. Oh yeah, I was a Bernie supporter. Be Bernie, that's cool, that's hip. Or, or if you want to be really cool, be Jill Stein or uh, the pothead for the Libertarian Party, I forget his name. But you don't, you don't tell them that you're a Trump supporter. Not at all. You just shut the, that, that. And then about 30, when people got to get jobs, then you'll finally start waking up. And I'm not saying you got to be like, yeah, go communism. <clears throat> but you don't mention, but it's too late now. A lot of people already know, you know, if you got anything on Facebook, I'd start deleting, start expunging things. Uh, usually you can tell if someone's a Trump supporter or at least not a leftist, you kind of get the, ah, okay. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mention Trump. But I want to make friends. How do I make them? How do I talk to people? Do you recommend any audio books of yours or whatnot? Thanks, Aaron. How much for an email response or video response? All right. I would recommend you read Reconnaissance Man. <clears throat> that's probably more important than, well, you're going to college. That's pretty good what you're going to college for. But read Reconnaissance Man anyway. Uh, and then also read Batch of Pat Economics. So that's not going to address your problem. Uh, look, dude, here, here's the thing. If you don't like yourself, no one's going to. You're, you're this type that, if I just sit here sad and pathetic, then maybe people will feel bad for me and hang out with me. No! People have limited times. They have a budget, not, not only financially, but they have a budget of time. They only have so much time in the day. They got to go to school. <clears throat> Do they want to hang out with sad, depressing dude who they're going to hate already on top of the fact you're a Trump supporter? Who's like, oh, I feel shame. Oh, I feel good. <laughs> Fuck! Just fuck, dude. Knock it the fuck off. All right? So you want to make friends. I don't know how many times I've done this video before. I'll keep charging you guys a billion times over. So let's go through this tired old answer again. Number one, as a young 20-something, this is not your fault. You really don't have a lot of life experience. You got to college, or you got to school, and now you're in college. And uh, by this time, normally you'd have some hobbies or something of 
proto interest. You know, you'd be in sports, you'd be like, it's not sound like you got that. So that, what you got to do is you got to go find some hobbies and sports or some activities that you enjoy. Because as it is right now, you are a blank hard drive. There are no programs or anything or apps on your hard drive. All right. All you got, you have one program. You do have one program. People open up this hard drive. They want to get to know you. They say, hey, what's this one program? They double click. It's called the crying program. <laughs> I have no friends. Like, fuck that computer. I never want to play that again. It's a virus. Right? So you got to add some interesting shit to your hard drive. So what does this mean? All right. I'm not saying sacrifice school. But you got to go out and you got to do something social. Don't join the computer programming club. I know why it is. Oh, should I join the engineer? No. Go join some fun shit. What fun shit should I join? Whatever. I don't know. I'm not you. You got to figure it out. I recommend ballroom dancing. That way you'll learn to deal with women. Do not use any of this. You're, we're not at women. You are so far away from hitting on women. We're not there yet. That's a separate request down the road. We're just going to help you get friends. You're not there to hit on women. You're there to learn to talk to both men and women. You learn there to be social. It's a nice, easy stepping stone. All right? Number two, I'm not saying go to parties or clubs, not drinking. I understand that's just some people, that's not your cup of tea. I actually ended up probably hurting myself more going to nightclubs and all that. But you might want to try jazz clubs. You might want to try maybe the symphony. Now, there's going to be older people, but at least you're getting out and being social. You could just be a super high IQ type of person who doesn't like boring, stupid American shit. And frankly, if all your, you know, I wouldn't want to hang out with 20 year olds. Not if, I mean, God, I can't even stand liberals now. Now I can afford to be that. And back when I was younger, we didn't have a choice. Every woman wanted to line up and suck Clinton's dick. And they did. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I would still go. I would still talk to him. But you got to go do some ballroom dancing. If there's a sport you like, don't play cricket. Not fucking cricket. I know you're Bangladeshi. All you're going to do is hang out with more Bangladeshis and East Indians and Pakistanis. I mean, if you really, really, really like cricket, okay, fine. Go and play. You're going to make some friends. Uh, but uh, try something else. Uh, if you want to baseball, if you want to, there's meetup groups. Even Dungeons and Dragons, you know. Uh, your goal is to make friends. So if you like Role-playing games, you like video games, see if there's a meetup for Dungeons and Dragons or, or Battletech or, or something like that. I mean, the, the world is your oyster. There's got to be a ton of different college groups and, and activities and social clubs at college that you could, whatever you want, whatever is of interest to you, right? The problem you might run into, though, is that they're going to be dumb 20-somethings, unless you get into the D&D or kind of the nerdy crowd, which is cool. That's fine. So you might have to go outside of college. You have meetup.com. You can find, uh, and especially in New York City, you got the population. You can find anything. There's got to be a meetup for anything. So whatever it is, if you know, write down what you always wanted to do as a kid. What is, what's fun? Not work, not career, not profession. What is fun? What would you like to do? And then go see if there's clubs out there to do it. Then go attend the clubs. All right? So that's the first step. You got to get out of there. Okay, no, your first step is to quit hating yourself. That fucking faggoty shit ends fucking now, right? The second thing you're going to do, one of these clubs you're going to join, the second thing you're going to do is then you're going to start looking at clubs you want to join. In those clubs, I strongly recommend one is ballroom dancing and the other one is some kind of martial arts. Jiu-jitsu is, that would really toughen you up quick, but it, it sucks. I didn't like jiu-jitsu that much. Um, maybe kickboxing, not not karate where you touch people. Oh, point. No, you want to like actually connect. Maybe even regular boxing. Some fucking activity where you get exercise and you get manned up and you get roughed up a little bit. All right? We need to jack your testosterone up. So that's another thing. Um, and then some others. That's the second thing you do is you join some club. Two of which, one ballroom, another is a martial arts. The third thing then you're going to do is when you are in these social situations... Usually you don't have to do much in terms of socializing. When it comes to martial arts, you got a sensei at the dojo who's going to say, okay, we're going to do push-ups, and now we're going to spar. And here's some technique we're going to practice. It's not a lot of socializing. Um, ballroom dancing, kind of the same thing. You're just taking instruction, and then you're going to learn. But then you'll slowly be introduced to other people. 
Uh, your Dungeons and Dragons club, that might be a little bit more social. If you join cricket, I don't mean to be so hard on cricket, I just want you to try different things here in the United States. But you know, you're a cricket, you got some, you know, there might be the Bangladeshi American student group. Go hang out with those guys, they probably have some similar issues, but they, I guarantee you they do have similar issues, problems, benefits, questions, alright? Go hang out with, with like and like, that's fine. Um, uh, but you're going to then start talking. Now, how do you talk? How do you socialize? For you, someone who doesn't have friends and woe is me and uh -huh, right? It's the rule of three to one. You have people say something three times before you say something about yourself or you contribute something to the conversation. Listening is golden, silent, no. Talking is silver, silence or listening is golden. And what your goal is, your, everyone, all conversation is, is different people trying to tell other people about themselves. Really good conversationalists, people who get to make friends, are those that inquire about other people, not in an interrogative sense, not as if you're trying to stalk them, right? but in a genuine, curious sense. Thus, the three to one rule. So if it's normal conversation with a group of people, you wait until three things are said by each person, you know, and then you say, oh, and you wait. You don't have to, but you wait for the opportune moment to say something very insightful and very clever, very observational and very pertinent to the topic of conversation. Now, if you come up with a very good observation, something that is very germane to the topic at hand, then yes, go ahead and say that because timing is everything, but then you wait. You wait until another great opportunity comes to say, oh, but ah, this happened over, I don't know, in Bangladesh. Da, 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 da. Oh, really? Yeah, we take down the ships over there. That's where all the scrap metal comes from. It's very dangerous jobs. You hit the gas tank. Boom. Oh, many deaths. Oh. Um, I read an article about the Bangladeshi scrapyards. It's actually quite interesting for anybody else listening. Uh, but, and that's, and you give it time. It takes time. Then you show up with another thing. They're like, oh, hey, it's it's whatever his name is, because I don't want to mention your name. Um, it's Bob. Hey, Bob, how's the Bangladeshi scrapyards? There's a joke. There's an opening. It's like, ah, safe as always. Oh, oh, oh Bob's so funny. Oh, he makes he makes Bangladeshi death sound funny. <laughs> but And then you just kind of quiet. That's all you do. And then you just make for the opportune moments. Right? Then when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversation, again, the three-to-one ratio, but when they say something, you're not, this is not you expending your one to three ratio. You ask them a question of what they said. And it has to be honest and sincere. Again, you don't want to interrogate, but someone says, yeah, I'm major in mechanical engineering. Oh, why'd you choose that? Perfectly acceptable question. People like to talk about themselves. They feel great about that. You don't have to say a damn thing about yourself, but if you ask people enough questions about them, they think they know you like the back of their hand, like you guys are best buddies, and you don't know a fucking thing about you. And it's like, oh, if that's interesting, so you were, were you going to stick around and work here in New York City, or are you going to go somewhere else? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking, oh, why do you, why do you think you go down to Florida? Oh, just, and they say, why, why are you ask so many questions? Oh, I'm just curious, you know, that's all. I, you know, what else am I supposed to ask people? Uh, so, and then over time, your, your goal is not to impress people. It's just to, like, just inquire about them. That's it. That's all it is. And then slowly but surely, friendships will form naturally. All right? So one, step one, knock it the fuck off with the... <laughs> That ends fucking now, right? Uh, two groups, ballroom dancing, martial arts have to be one, uh, two of the three or four groups you join. Don't don't overkill it on the groups. You only have a certain amount of time. You have to do your studies. Don't bother with nightclubs or bars. It's fucking bullshit, all right? Uh, three, work on your conversation. And then four, you just got to give it time. That's it, all right? And then anytime, here's another thing. Anytime you start feeling down, woe is me, boo-hoo, I don't have friends, go join a running club. Go join a running club. It'll get your endorphins up. It'll put you in shape. All right? And you could go run and, and, and do that. And then here's another one. I know, I know you, this is not meant as an insult, but this is, this is deadly serious. The, not the subcontinent, but certainly the East Indians, the Pakistanis, and the Bangladeshis don't dress like Pakistanis, East Indians, and Bangladeshis. I'm not saying you got to dress up fancy schmancy, 
But for fuck's sake, don't wear khakis or wear blue jeans, okay? We could just tell it's like, oh god, what really? You know, get a cool haircut, okay? Put a little bit of money and time into just making yourself look a little Americanized. Don't look like you just came off the boat, all right? Don't have the short sleeve button up collar and no, no, okay? You don't want to look like, um, what was it? The show that's really not that funny. Everyone told me to watch it. Where the smart people are. Galaxy people or the, oh. Uh, the physics principle. The big, big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. Don't, don't dress the stereotype with the slacks and the, 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 no. Just a couple nice shirts, right? Sweatshirts are fine. Blue jeans. Wear some normal shoes, all right? Just look around, look at what the other American idiots are wearing, all right? And then just do that, all right? And then that's actually going to help with women a little bit, but again, we're not there yet. <clears throat> and But above all else, and here's, here's the important thing. Remember, you're going to school for, for education. You're not going there to socialize. You ideally would have opportunities to socialize and all that, um, but don't sacrifice your studies to try and be social, all right? Um, some people just aren't social. You might have a freakishly high IQ, just don't get along with anyone until you go join the Dungeons and Dragons Club or the Battletech Club or the <clears throat> Warhammer Club or whatever, and you're playing all these cool videos, and you're like, oh, I found my people. All right? But certainly do your studies, but when those studies are done and you're done working, you got a little bit of free time, you must go out and join some clubs and groups. And that is how you're going to get friends. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't know how, you, how you're going to maintain school. You've got to have a spirit. You have to have a soul. You have to have something to look forward to. You can't just be studying all the time and being depressed the rest of the time. So, if you got questions, Clary's got answers. Chris, where I had that on mute at assholeconsulting.com. Uh, go there. Send family, friends, loved ones, people you hate, people you are genuinely indifferent about. If they need a swift kick in the ass, we'll see you kids later. Tools.